Hi, in this video I'd like to give a brief overview on anemias. Anemia refers to a clinical state in which the body's tissues and organs are not getting enough oxygen to supply their needs. Oxygen is generally supplied through red blood cells after respiration through the lungs and gas exchange. And this decrease in oxygen transfer and supply can be the result of two main reasons. First, it can be decreased synthesis of red blood cells. This can be the cause of a nutritional deficiency or some other causes. And second, it can be the result of increased destruction. In cases of increased destruction, this is often called hemolytic anemia, in which heme means blood and lytic means destruction or devastation of the cells. And hemolytic anemia, one example, would be mutations in the tranquilase and cause increased oxidative stress to the cells. So if you if you have I guess if you eat too many flava beans or if you have take certain drugs that are harmful to the red blood cells, such as sulfa drugs, you can cause more lysis and that decreases the amount of red blood cells in your bloodstream and thus there's less of a oxygen carrying capacity in your blood. But for this lecture I'll primarily talk about nutrition deficient anemias, which are the decreases in red blood cell synthesis. So first let's talk about the life cycle of a red blood cell. Red blood cells start from progenitors in the bone marrow, which are converted into reticulocytes, which are essentially premature red blood cells, but are already migrating through the bloodstream that has that still that although is also a nuclear, still has some amount of mRNA and and I guess translation occurring. After reticulocytes they become full-fledged red blood cells and they differ both in the staining for the mRNA and reticulocytes are also slightly bigger. Red blood cells typically last in the body for a hundred and twenty days of which the first one or two days are stuck as reticulocytes. The amount of reticulocytes in the blood is very important because it can indicate what type of anemia it is. For example, if there's decreased synthesis, one would imagine there would be fewer reticulocytes. Whereas if there's increased destruction, the body can respond in, in causing more erythropoiesis, causing more synthesis of red blood cells, in which the proportion of reticulocytes to total red blood cells becomes larger. Generally, anemia has a couple of major symptoms and a couple major clinical presentations. But this might not occur in all patients, but this typically includes shortness of breath, tachycardia, in which your heart and lungs are working harder to exchange, exchange gases and pump blood through the body, even when there's a, a less carrying capacity. There can be organomegaly. in which the liver and spleen tries to compensate. But with decreased oxygen supplies, there can be neurological sy symptoms, which includes dizziness, fatigue, and uh, gen general altered met mental status. The anemia can be a result of dietary history, which we'll talk about primarily as nutrition defi nutritional deficiencies, but it can also be the result of genetics and also blood loss. Occult blood loss, either as melena or hematochuiza in the GI, is of something that doctors generally have to look out for when trying to diagnose the ideology of the ideology of anemia. So when we talk about blood, what's in blood? Blood is a mixture of cells, of which red blood cells are approximately 45% of. This is called the hematocrit.
and plasma. Plasma, which includes a lot of the other important things in the, blo in the blood, such as the various ions, the fluid, and a lot of other good stuff, like clotting factors and vitamins. So of this 45% red blood cells in the blood, it actually contains 67% of the iron in our body, whereas another 25-29% is stored in the liver and spleen, and then the rest, very little, 4% is in body tissue, and less than 1% is soluble in the plasma. So as you can imagine, if you have fewer red blood cells, iron can be one of the major nutritional deficiencies. As well as two other molecules, or two other vitamins, named folate and vitamin B12. We'll talk about it in a l just a little bit. So second, let's talk about lab tests. What can a doctor order to try to determine what kind of anemia you have, given that you have this clinical presentation? The first, as mentioned before, is the reticulocytes. The number or proportion of reticulocytes in comparison to the total number of red blood cells can indicate whether this is a result of increased, increased damage, increased red blood cell destruction, or a decreased synthesis. Another test could be the blood smear in which this blood is smeared onto a, onto a glass slide and you can look at the size and shape of red blood cells. This is actually one of the cl major ways to distinguish between iron deficiency and folate B12 deficiency, which iron deficiency causes ma microlytic, microcytic anemia and folate B12 causes macrocytic this essentially refers to the fact that normal blood, normal red blood cells are of a certain size, but in iron deficiency, they're generally smaller, whereas in folate and B12 deficiency, they're generally bigger. We'll talk about this more as why this is later on. So first, for iron deficiency. Iron deficiency can be caused in both an increase in the amount that we need or a decrease in the amount of, that we're absorbing. So, for example, people who are particularly sus susceptible to iron deficiency are females because of menstruation or during pregnancy, infants, and adolescents. Iron deficiency can also occur with GI bleeding because this is generally, this can be a long-term bleeding that is not entirely obvious or not something that people will treat immediately. Some other types of clinical signs can be pica in people uh, for some reason would want to eat clay or dirt and this 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 it might seem weird but that's one of the there's like an impulse to eat this kind of weird stuff they'll have glottitis which is the swelling and redness of the tongue as well as concavity of the nails and angular and fissures on the mouth on the t tips on the t left and right most parts of your mouth in terms of other lab tests that can confirm a diagnosis of iron deficiency are the serum, serum iron, which would decrease, the amount of transferrin. Transferrin is a molecule in your bloodstream, in the plasma, that binds iron and helps transport it across the different cells. When the body sees that there isn't enough iron, it actually increases the amount of transferrin, even as to, I guess, absorb more from the small intestine. They'll grab more and make it more likely to pull it into the body. So the amount of saturation of transferrin decreases. And also there's a decrease in ferritin. Ferritin is the analog of transferrin, or the molecule inside the cytosol, that is used to bind iron. When there's less iron, there's less ferritin inside the cells. And the amount of ferritin inside the cells typically correlates well with the amount of plasma ferritin, simply because the amount of ferritin uh, in the plasma tends to be uh, a leakage of the intracellular protein. Secondly, are the nutritional deficiencies of folate and B12. 
as as in the nucleotide metabolism lectures, folate is essential for carbon transfer, and this is essential for nucleotide synthesis, and it's the deficiency in folate is most prominent in tissues that have the most turnover or synthesize the most cells. And folate, typically the body has about five milligrams of storage, so approximately four to five months without folate is enough to cause a deficiency. But folate is generally, there's a lot of folate in veggies, so if you eat a lot of leafy greens, you'll be fine. But a lot of folate deficiencies can be the result of problems in absorption. This can occur with either celiac disease, in which there's inflammation of the villi of the small intestine, or it can be the result of resection of the small intestine. This is when parts of the small intestine, such as the ileum, is taken out, either because of Crohn's or inflammation or some kind of other uh, surgical necessity. B12 is, an, is a vitamin that is often used, that is used to convert naturally occurring folate, which is the uh, N-methyl tetrahydrofolate into tetrahydrofolate, which the body can use in a lot of its carbon transferring processes. And B12 is the opposite. It's found in animal products. And is crucial for this and also anti as an antioxidant. B12 is has a very unique way of getting through the digestive system. So this this would be the esophagus, the stomach, and then the small intestine. Essentially what happens is that B12 in the stomach binds to intrinsic factor which is secreted by pancreatic cells that also secrete the, um, the protons and this binds the B12 to prevent it from being digested in the stomach. This goes into the duodenum and because of the, lo the higher pH is released but finally in the ileum this is reabsorbed. So absorbed in ileum. So if you have resection of the ileum which can often occur with Crohn's disease, you might have decreased B12 absorption. And B12 can also often be the result of perinaceous anemia. Perinaceous meaning dangerous, because if you have an autoimmune disorder in which the intrinsic factor is no longer being synthesized, no matter how much B12 you're given orally, you won't absorb it. Lab signs for deficiencies in either folate and B12 can be the result, can be shown as a decrease in the number of platelets and increase or increase in the number of hypersegmented neutrophils, as well as clinical signs such as mouth sores and is often, so B12 can be um, associated with a lot of neurological signs such as par paracentesis, numbness, or in general altered mental status. So in summary, anemia refers to this, I guess, this cloud of clinical presentations in which the body is not getting enough oxygen due to either decrease in red blood, due to decrease in red blood cells, either because of increased destruction or decreased synthesis. Decreased synthesis can be the result of a nutritional deficiencies, in particular iron deficiency, folate deficiency, and B12 deficiency. In, the which, in which the ways to compare or contrast the different types are through how the red blood cells look. When you do a blood smear, the size and the shape of the red blood cells can help determine what type of deficiency you have, as well as a variety of lab tests that are increasingly specific for different types of nutritional deficiency. There's also selectivity in the clinical presentation, in which B12 deficiency is the result of neurological a disorder and changes, and iron deficiency can typically have a couple of strange symptoms such as the concavity of the nails and the pica.